hi everybody um my name is nick um and a uh, big big welcome to you all um so i've been working in the european youth sector for a number of years now um and um what we want to do with with this uh um webinar is just explore a little bit about life on the road um and uh having having been working as a, as a full-time freelancer for uh what does it say here 14 years now um there's been a lot of traveling involved in my life uh over the last 14 years um at least uh two to three times a month um ah yes and the tribute to willie nelson thank you willie even though we didn't get to hear your music uh there is a nice track about being on the road again um so um yeah what what is this all about um well as was mentioned um it's about traveling, traveling a lot um, and uh, either on the move or sitting around and waiting. Uh, traveling seems to consist of a huge amount of sitting around and waiting or standing in queues. And uh, over the years, I've, I've had some adventures, some difficulties, um, some revelations. Um, I've obsessed about my trolley backpack and uh, getting the right size, walking around shops in the UK for about half a year with a tape measure in my pocket, trying to find the size of backpack that would actually fit into this uh, ATR 72s that Air Serbia uses. These are the small planes with, with the propellers. Um, I also uh, have uh, not a very fond memory, but a, a very unusual experience of sleeping one night in two different hotels in two different cities in two countries uh, because of uh, cancelled flights. Um, so uh, yeah, there's amazing things that can happen uh, when we're when we're on the road um or one time taking a bus in bosnia and asking the driver when will when will we arrive and getting the answer we arrive if god wills it um which didn't do anything to actually help me to understand when but uh it was good to know that we had god on our side um and then uh, just observations that you make about about people um when when you're traveling and um my latest observation about people in queues there are three types of people in queues especially when you're doing the um, uh, passport control or, or security. Um, there's the chatty, not paying attention type of person who's just so into talking with their partner or colleague or whoever it is they're with that they have no comprehension of what's going on around them and they're not ready when they get to security or passport control. Um, and then you have these people that, that seem to just stand and let the person in front of them move ahead a meter, two meters, three meters, I, for me, these people are some kind of sociopaths or psychopaths because this drives me absolutely uh, insanely uh, uh, crazy with anxiety and stress. I don't know why. I mean, obviously, it's my problem, not theirs. But um, And then there's the rest of us, of course, who, who just shuffle along um, with, with everybody else. Um, and, uh, oh, yes, and um, what I wanted to show also was, um, yeah, the, the difference between uh, traveling economy and traveling first class. And I think in all the years that I've been traveling, once, only once have I been upgraded. And it was a flight from Zagreb to Dubrovnik, which is 50 minutes. Um, so actually, it made absolutely no difference at all to my uh, to my flight experience. Um, so, yeah, um, that's the life of traveling. Uh, some things can, uh, can happen and... Um, um, yeah, life is an adventure when you're traveling. Um, but what we want to say with this is that uh, one of the things that we, we've done quite a lot of research uh, around this um, from our own experiences, but also desk research. And one of the, uh, the interesting things is that there is no life changing hack for this topic. Um, there are lots and lots of tiny things that you can do to support yourself when you're traveling. Um, and probably at least 90% of what I'm going to share today and, and what maybe some of you can also share um, is going to be known by everybody else. But maybe there's 10% of things which uh, are not known. And, and these things can sometimes be the revolution, revelationary things that uh, we actually need um, to, to support us in our, in our traveling lives. Um, and, and it could be things like um, I, I had a flight from, uh, I live in Montenegro, uh, and I was flying from Dubrovnik in Croatia to uh, to Strasbourg in France. Ticket price, 750 euros. 
um, which is absolutely insane, but that, that was the going price. And a, and a friend of mine pointed out that actually it can be worth checking business class. If you get a stupidly expensive price for an economy ticket, check the business price uh, business class prices. Um, sometimes when the seats are running out on economy flights, uh, on in, in economy, um, they push the prices up and up and up, and they, they exceed uh, business class. Now, technically, working for the European Union, uh, at least the Erasmus Plus program, the Council of Europe Youth Partnership, we're technically not supposed to use uh, business class, but that doesn't stop you from asking. And you can, you can contact whoever it is that you're um, contracted by and just say, look, business class is two, 200 euros cheaper than economy at the moment, um, especially with these last minute sometimes uh, deals that we have to go through. Um, another interesting uh, aspect to think about when traveling is, is many, many years ago, uh, it used to be a waste of time getting to the airport hours in advance because they're uncomfortable. There's no internet, uh, no power sockets, um, nowhere to work, nothing to do. Um, I'm painting a very bleak picture and actually it wasn't that long ago and it wasn't as bad as that but uh, things have radically changed in the last 10 years um, most airports now do provide electricity they, they, uh, most airports will have excellent internet um, it can be worth arrive, arriving uh, extra early for your flight especially if you want to avoid long queues uh, for check-in or, or, or uh, passport control or security and you know that it's a quiet time because you can actually set yourself up in an airport now to work. So th these are just some of the things that we can think about uh, doing for ourselves when we're um, when we're traveling. And um, some of the things uh, we looked at in terms of uh, of, of this was uh, frequent flyer programs, airport lounges, luggage, packing, exercising, sleeping, um, and not just uh, flying, but also we looked a little bit at trains and buses and the concept of buying tickets. So th these are all the things that uh, we're, we're going to be exploring. Um, but before we go into that in any more detail, um, we'd like to just invite you into, I think we can just make uh, a couple of checkout, uh, checkout, uh, sorry, I mean airport mind, breakout rooms, um, or we can say checkout rooms for this, uh, for this webinar. Um, and uh, just to, uh, to, have a chat. Ah, sorry, yes, this was about uh, getting to the airport and, and losing time. Um, where's where's my questions? Here they go. Um, just share very in 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 ten minutes or so. Um, what was your worst experience, funniest experience, or best experience? Choose one of those. There's not a lot of time, and there'll be three or four of you in each each of the breakout rooms. Um, and then, do you have a hack? Do you have a travel hack? which you think would be uh, useful for other people to know about. Um, and also then put together any questions you might have about traveling. Uh, we're not gonna do a Q and A immediately after this. We will ask you to share a little bit about the travel hacks, not your stories. I'm afraid they're gonna need to stay in your breakout rooms. Just enjoy those, but we'll have time to uh, share, maybe uh, get some of the, um, the travel hacks from you uh, that you can share. Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, it would be nice maybe just to, you ended up all in one room actually so the uh, the only people that didn't take part was was me and vitali <laughs> and dasha because uh, she she's apologized that she can't she can't uh, speak at the moment um would anybody like to uh, did you get around to sharing any travel hacks would anybody like to share any travel hack that uh, that they have that they think would be yeah Slager, i can hear see you nodding is that a yes <laughs> I just returned from Brussels, Nick, <laughs> two hours ago, actually, and learned a lot. I mean, um, patience and uh, acceptance, you know, whatever happens will happen. So what I learned today, actually yesterday, is that I also can earn money during traveling. I didn't know that, you know, such opportunities exist, <laughs> but I was volunteering to stay overnight in Vienna because the, the plane was overbooked to Podgorica and they pay me 250 euros, which is crazy, plus hotel and, you know, all this. But uh, yeah, still waiting for the luggage. But anyways, this is what I learned. I, I didn't know, you know, so um, yeah, yeah. also, yeah, I shared this um, 
um, we were discussing about, you know, uh, traveling less or traveling more pre and post pandemic and uh, this amazement about the diversity of people that you can meet, these angels that could help you, unexpected situations and stuff like that. I mean, uh, even if we are exhausted, being open to whatever is happening helps, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, um, giving up your seat because they've overbooked. Um, it's, it can be worth negotiating because uh, 250, you can get much more. Uh, just, just to know for future reference. Uh, you can push them and say, no, if you're keeping me overnight, then I, I want more than that. I think you can get up to five, six hundred even um, if they're if they're really desperate. Yeah. Cool. And and I also like the point about, uh, yeah, what will be will be. Um, I I was on a, um, a flight, I think, from uh, somewhere in Germany. I forget the airport now back to to Montenegro. Um, and it was like there were 28 kids on this flight. Um, it must have been the end of a, a vacation period or something. And and. Uh, I had a, a woman behind me with, with two small kids and the entire flight, the kid was kicking my chair. So I'm like this. And it's just like, what am I going to do? I mean, there's no point saying anything because she's struggling already with two small kids. Um, the kid doesn't know that it's it's being a pain in the ass. It's, it is what it is. And I just, I just accepted it. Um, if it was an adult, maybe, I, well, I would have said something, but, but no, it's, you just have to, Go with the flow sometimes. Um, and it, yeah, it's a good reminder for that. Thank you. Any, anybody else with any other travel hacks that they have? Yeah, Rudolfo. R Rudolfo, sorry. Hi. Oh my God, I'm uh, loving this webinar. This is like, I love this subject so much. Yeah, um, <laughs> cool. <laughs> I have one, but it's kind of like corrupt as well. Okay. Like you're playing with the system a little bit. A yeah. trick, for example, if you miss the flight, and for, especially if it's like a very important, significant flight, like transatlantic, I don't know, switching between regions or continents, you can get a not fit for fly certificate. And that way you won't have to pay. Like, oh, really? The, the change fee. <laughs> okay. And, so, and most airports, which are really big, which are really international, they have like a facility where you can get the certificate for free or wow. just pay a small percentage, like really smaller than what would yeah, be yeah. Would pay for the change fee. <laughs> That's the wow. trick. Okay, <laughs> good, to, good to know. Thank you. Cool. Anybody else? Or I'll, I'll go on. No, then I'm going to um, share my screen again. Um, yeah, so the, the net, just to, um, oh, by the way, if you have any questions or any hacks that uh, you do want to share, but you didn't want to voice, then, then please just write them in, in the chat. Um, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, buying tickets. Um, th this is always um, a difficult one in, in a sense. Nowadays, the majority of people will buy tickets online, uh, Skyscanner and um, I forget the names of, of there's, there's loads of these um, these things. It can be worth um, checking different ones for different because they do sometimes have different prices. Um, personally, something I've been doing over the years is I've gone to a travel agent, um, which is uh, not so common anymore. And the the main reason I do this is because um, if uh, Lufthansa, as usual, is on strike. Um, you know, which I've had happen in the past, and I've been I've had a message to say all my flights the next day are cancelled, and I've been in Germany again on this occasion. Um, I call my travel agent, and and within an hour they called me back with a new set of flights, um, all, all sorted out. So I didn't have to stress, I didn't have to do anything, um, and that's the reason I use a travel agent. Um, you need to build up a relationship if you are going to use a travel agent. You need to build a relationship with them. 
uh, because some travel agents will just, uh, which I've heard stories of, will just turn around and say, relationship with them, they will support you. So any problem with my flights now, the first thing I do is call my travel agent. Um, the, the downside of this is that the big companies like Skyscanner and Co um, will all buy tickets en masse. So their prices are going to be cheaper. What you pay in a travel agent is substantially more expensive and you're going to be paying a travel agent fee. They have to earn a living. So I think the one I use uh, is 30 euros for every flight on top of the, the ticket price. Um, but it's it's worth it's worth thinking about. Um, there's also um, some things, for example, Lufthansa. Again, they do some bus routes, which on many of the online um, operators, they don't give you the option for the bus routes that Lufthansa does. And uh, for those who don't know, Lufthansa does. Uh, I think it's uh, Frankfurt to Strasbourg, for ex for example. I think also Munich Nuremberg, uh, and and I think there's one other. And these count as flights. But if you try and put in the code into the online um, uh, things like Skyscanner, it doesn't work. It doesn't come up. And again, with my travel agent, I can say, I, I want you to give me, I think for Strasbourg, the code is XER, which is basically Strasbourg train station. Um, and then they can book my flight all the way through. And that includes then the uh, the, the bus flight from Frankfurt to, uh, to Strasbourg. So, yeah. There are some which will accept these and, and acknowledge them, but many of the, the bigger companies just don't. Um, and while we're talking about flying, um, we have these, these three wonderful companies, um, Star Alliance, Sky Team, and One World. Um, depending where you live is, is um, I mean, th these are the um, frequent flyer programs. Um, I think it's only these three that operate around the world. I don't think there are any others, at least not, not of the size of these. Uh, if you're traveling, especially around central parts of, of, of Europe, if you consider Europe as a whole and, and the center, so Germany, Belgium, um, uh, Austria, Switzerland, um, if you're flying with those countries a lot, therefore with Swiss Air, Lufthansa, etc., Turkish Airlines also, Star Alliance is your one. Um, I think One World has British Airways and maybe Finnair. I, I forgot to check this before we started. Sky Team is Air France, um, the, the Dutch airline, the Netherlands. I forget what it's called. Um, I think they have two or three. It used to be, um, yeah, I think they have two or three. So again, if, if you're flying regularly from those countries, it makes sense that you would join Sky Team or Star Alliance or One World. It depends where you live and, and who you're flying with the most. And base, base your um, decision on that. It is worth it. Uh, there are a lot of things um, that you can get, um, at least with Star Alliance, because that, that's who I I'm, was with, or still am with. I'm traveling much less now, so I don't have all, all the privileges. Um, but uh, it, with, with the silver card, for example, I could get business class check-in, which uh, if you are checking baggage and there's a huge queue in economy, um business class check-in uh, is is wonderful because it's usually just no one or one or two people um access to the lounges in the airports uh which is always a, a nice perk um and um i think with turkish uh, you don't have access to the lounge but you can board as a business class as well so you know there's different things plus you're getting the air miles um which which you know they have shops and you can buy stuff so that this is this is worth thinking about. Um, the airport lounges, um, they can be of a great benefit. You you don't get automatic access. I think you have to build up a certain amount of miles to um, or, or flight segments in order to to get up to that level. Um, but it really can make a difference if you're traveling a lot. Uh, airport lounges really, really do make a difference. There are tables and chairs, uh, literally desks where you can work. They're generally quieter, not guaranteed. <laughs> if it's a holiday period, there's often uh, there can often be a lot of families in there or, or groups um, who, who make uh, much more noise. But generally, it's a quieter space, more comfortable space. Um, there's free food and drinks, um, uh, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks. Um, if you want a proper meal, you're probably better off 
uh, paying for it in, in another part of the airport, but uh, you'll get at least snacks or, or some decent, half decent food. It's not fantastic, but it's half decent um, in the lounges. Um, you can also get help actually at their desk when you enter the lounge. Um, if you want to check, uh, change a seat or, or uh, check a connection, or you have any problem, uh, they usually have staff at the reception that will actually help you with that. And again, often there'll be long queues at transfer counters and, and other places. You can avoid that by uh, using the ones in, in the lounges. Uh, so there are a lot of benefits. Uh, it's not easy to get, especially if, if you're Europe-based flying, uh, because the uh, the miles are so small. So it can take a lot of time to actually build up. I'm not so familiar with Star uh, with um, the other two. I know Star Alliance and how they work. Oh, and within that, each airline operates differently within the program, which can be a bit confusing. So um, Turkish Airlines, their miles and smiles is slightly different from Lufthansa's miles and more, which is slightly different from Aegean's, whatever they're called, which is different from uh, Croatian and, and so on and so on. So uh, it's worth checking what, what all the information is, what the details are. And talking of food, um, well, flying around Europe these days, um, you're more likely to see the things on the left, um, a glass of water if you're lucky, and, and uh, some kind of dry snack. Um, Austrian Airlines are my favourite at the moment because they always give a chocolate uh, as well. Um, but um, that's it. I, I heard today that Lufthansa is considering actually introducing uh, tea and coffee back onto their short-haul flights, uh, but not a lot more than that. Um, I think the only um, flight operator that I've been using in, in recent times that is giving anything resembling food is Turkish Airlines. Um, and um, so if you're flying from anywhere in Europe to, to Istanbul, for example, uh, you, you'll get uh, more of what you see on, on the right picture, right side picture. Um, talking of food uh, and drinks, it's worth noting, and one of the reasons that airline food has a bad reputation is actually because our taste buds change at altitude. I don't understand the science of that, so um, maybe somebody else knows. Um, but, um, you know, it, it does change. We also get dehydrated when we fly. So it's, it's really worth, as tempting as it is to, to have a beer or a glass of wine, um, uh, balance that with having water or coffee as well, because coffee and alcohol are dehyd dehydrate us and traveling dehydrates us. We're in very dry atmospheres a lot of the time when we're traveling. Um, so uh, taking a water bottle or something or taking advantage of, of getting water whenever you can um, is, is, is highly recommended. And then we move to the wonderful world of luggage. Um, I made the, the classical mistake many years ago of, of um, going to one of these, uh, almost like a, a, a store that has everything for, for very low prices um, and bought a cheap baggage for about uh, I don't know 12 or 15 euros or something like that it was completely destroyed on the first trip I took it um it really is worth spending money on luggage um there's yeah there's no other way around it um it's going to get bashed it's going to get scratched it's going to get uh, beaten to hell because luggage handlers are, are not the most gentle of people in, in the world when it comes to their job um so, but uh, the better quality, um, the more likely it is to last. And the, the last ones I got, uh, I got through Air Miles actually, um, Samsonite, and this thing just seems to be lasting forever, uh, as, as bashed as it gets. Um, I did some little uh, tips and tricks and hacks. Um, if you check in really late, um, there's a ch and you're having a check-in baggage, um, there's a chance that your baggage will end up getting loaded onto the plane last, which means it will be on the, um, what are these, the conveyor belt thing first. Um, not guaranteed, but uh, that's one theory that I've been reading about. Another one is that um, uh, you can ask to have a fragile sticker stuck onto your, onto your bag. Um, if you don't have one yourself, when you get to check in, they do have these available. Um, and then again, it kind of reaches some level of priority. And there is also something called a priority tag, which you can also ask for. So if you have a, you need to get out of the airport quick, you can ask again for that 
uh, when you do check in, they stick a label on it and it's prioritized to actually come onto the conveyor belt um, pretty, pretty quickly. Again, none of these are guaranteed, um, but uh, they're hacks that are worth picking up on if, if, you, uh, if you get the chance. Um, then there's, there's two, two questions about luggage. The first one is soft shell or hard shell? Um, and there are people that have their favorites um, and there are pluses and minuses um, to, to both of these. The soft luggage generally is more flexible. Uh, you can have some level of expansion. Um, and, oh, what else did they say? Um, they're lighter uh, to, to begin with, uh, but um, oh, and you have all the exterior and you have many more pockets. So you, you can easily access things if, if you want to put them in, in those pockets. But they have limited protection, because uh, if, especially if you have things inside, because they're soft. Um, they do get, uh, they do wear out a little bit quicker than the hard ones. Um, and they're less water resistant. So um, keep in mind that your luggage can be spending some time outside waiting to get loaded into a plane. Um, and it's not protected at that point. The hard luggage generally is, is uh, longer lasting. Um, you, it does provide more protection for your belongings. Um, they are water resistant, except for um, uh, where the zip is. Um, they're easier to clean, uh, but they, they are heavier uh, to begin with. So you've also got to keep that in mind. Um, and they don't have that, most of them don't have that level of expandability. Um, and flexibility and then the other key question is two wheels or four wheels um and uh i have to say i've always been a two-wheel person i'm not a fan of the four wheels um but what i'm hearing and what i'm reading is that the four wheels are improving and one of the the difficulties you'll now have if you're a two-wheel person is the um there are less and less options for this uh, they seem to be phasing out the market for the two wheels and are focusing on the four wheels. One of my hatreds for the four wheels was that if you had to tip them up, these round wheels would just be doing this all the time, and it was really difficult to, to actually pull them. Now with technology, that's changing apparently. So many four wheels um, also operate as two wheels where you need to, to use them as such. Um, so, uh, yeah, things are changing. Um the four wheels, obviously, the, you can rotate 360 degrees very easily. If you're boarding a plane with hand luggage with a four wheel, it's actually easier to push down the aisle because it can go uh, lengthways rather than widthways. Um, and many don't really fit down the aisle very comfortably. Um, uh, the, one of the pluses for the two wheels is that they don't run away from you when you uh, let go of it, uh, if you're on a slope anywhere. Um, but uh, the two wheels, yeah, you have to tip them over. So you're carrying some level of weight in your hand when you're pulling. Um, so yeah, there's, there's pluses and minuses, but the, the four wheels are coming out on top. Um, interestingly, and I can't find where I've put it in here now, um, some things about baggage, which is changing. Just seeing if I can quickly find uh, in my notes. No, I can't see it now. Ah, yes. Um, uh, they come now with GPS trackers. They come now with uh, USB ports. Um, they can come with um, uh, some kind of um, vacuum. I've, I've seen some new suitcases just come out um, and, and basically it operates on a vacuum. So you, you pack stuff into one. It has lots of these sleeves. You pack one part of the sleeve. You vacuum it, it squishes down to nothing, and then you can put the next load in, it squishes down to nothing, and so on. And, and what would normally be you know, a huge need for a suitcase space-wise, you can actually really, really reduce. So the technologies which are coming out now with these things um, are just crazy. Um, where are we going? Ah, yes, and this is this is my the love of my life, uh, my, uh, my own trolley. Um, trolley rucksack um i there are these are very difficult to find um for me they make this is my hand luggage that i mostly go with um if i'm going for a, a, a conference for example i can pack everything into that very easily uh, to last for three four days um 
and you can pull it and where you need your hands you can then put it on your back um so uh, it, for me it has the best of both worlds the negatives are that this weighs two kilos to begin with and nearly and you'll be lucky to find a trolley backpack which weighs less than that um you also lose uh, room because the handle obviously is taking a lot of space and the wheels take space so you are losing space as well but uh, for me it's the perfect combination um when i'm going through um, airports or, or stations or whatever with a regular pull one and i want to buy some food it's like what do i do do i try and hold everything with one hand and pull with the other or do i risk lose leaving my suitcase by the counter and run to a table with my food and hope my suitcase is there when i get back la, la, la. so um that's partly my own um stresses and anxieties about travel but uh, it's also a very practical problem so i can just put this on my back i got both hands free i can pay i can pick up my food get to my table um etc ah yes and uh, this is genius i just discovered this this is a guy called a young uh, guy called luke scarpino um now i have to try and put another screen on he has created this excel it's not excel it's the google equivalent of excel um he's created this thing which is a, a packing um uh, program and now i just need to find it okay I hope you're now seeing this Excel sheet on the full screen, yeah? Yeah. Um, so what you do is you go to the bag list um, and you can add in here, for example, a wash bag. You then go back to the main view. I can go here. Wash bag is now in. I go to edit, go to the other side. Um, I can give it a color, done, apply to all. And then I can put soap, shampoo, and wash bag. And then, uh, sorry, I forgot I'd already ticked some of these. So as I'm packing, uh, main suitcase, socks, and underwear. It now tells me I've 10% packed everything that needs to be packed and 22% packed what I want to put into my suitcase. Um, in the wash bag, I can add my soap and my shampoo, and it now tells me my wash bag is 100% complete. Um, and uh, I've now nearly 20% of my full packing. So you can make this list as long as you like. You can add as many um, different types of bags. So I, I have my backpack, which would normally be the, like a hand luggage. Uh, tech pouch, which is where I put would put um, all the uh, cables, um, coat because I always have my passport and wallet in the in my coat, um, trousers because I also often travel with um, trousers with those with those pockets on the knees, uh, whatever they're called, um, wash bag. They, you can have whatever else on this main suitcase, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I, I love it. I think this is um, absolutely genius uh, and very, very simple uh, way of, of uh, especially if you're like me, because sometimes I can take two hours packing, despite the fact that I've been traveling for 100 years already. I'm always thinking, did I think about this? What about that? And then I have to go through the suitcase again to check. So for, for people like me, this is uh, absolutely genius and perfect. Yeah, another travel hack uh, that I have is um, on, on this left side picture. Um, actually, this isn't everything. But basically, um, somebody pointed this out to me uh, a long, long time ago now, um, is um, have a travel bag, a, a wash bag that's already packed. If you're traveling on a regular basis, why unpack it? You know, buy another toothbrush, buy another tube of toothpaste and, and preferably a small one. Get those 50 mils or the 75 mils. Um, uh, buy a, a bar of soap. Um, the little uh, plastic jar there is is for shampoo. I, I don't have much hair, so I, for me, I can take a very small uh, jar of uh, shampoo to last me for 10 days. Uh, if you have hair or a lot of hair, that okay, it's not so sensible. But uh, um, yeah, under, underarm deodorant can be in there. Um, things that you use on a regular basis, um, just keep, keep packed. And then you don't have to worry that you've forgotten. You don't get to your destination and realize you don't have a toothbrush because you forgot it. Buy, buy a second everything if, if you're traveling on a regular basis. 
Um, the other picture is is uh, just well, water bottle keep keep yourselves hydrated. Um, this uh, thing on the left side is is a baggage weigher. If you're traveling with uh, Wizz Air or, or um, EasyJet, Ryanair, these airlines, which are really strict about weight, um, buy one of these things. They're about 10 euros or something like that, battery powered. You just hook the thing into your luggage, pick it up, hand baggage, main luggage, uh, and you can know then that you are you are good with, with the weight. Um, head torch. I always take a head torch when I'm traveling. I work a lot with uh, smaller organizations um locally based organizations and sometimes the for for mobilities the the hotels they're booking are not top quality um and sometimes they're even hostels so you don't get a bedside lamp on on uh, next to your bed so you wake up in the night needing to take a pee you crash into a table or a chair or something you smash your foot your knee whatever because you can't get to the because you can guarantee the light switch is on the other side of the room um Take a head torch, uh, then you have your own bed, bedside uh, bedside lamp with you. And then the other thing there, obviously, is, is a bottle opener. Um, you want to share a bottle of wine with a colleague. Um, you get back from the shop, no bottle opener. Take one with you. It's always there. Beer, wine, you've got access to whatever you need. So that, those are just some of the things that often go with me. Um, obviously, if it's hand baggage, then I can't. Uh, take some of those things, but uh, if I'm checking in baggage, which is my preference anyway, um, then uh, those are some of the things I can take. Uh, and this is just to share. This is um, some of you may know Pavel. He's uh, a youth worker and youth work trainer from Estonia, and um, he was traveling. I think this was a couple of years ago now already. He was traveling for eighty days uh, to a large number of countries with different climates. Um, and with hand baggage only. Um, and, and this is something that Esther, I know, also is, is a hand baggage traveller um, and a minimal traveller, if, if I remember right, Esther. Um, and uh, he managed to pack all of that, everything on the bed that you see there, in, in and that was his packing, basically. So uh, absolutely genius. Um, and just some, some hacks about uh, packing is uh, fold and then roll up t-shirts uh, because they take up much less space. I think that's a classic one that's known for a long time now. Um, if you're ca traveling, if you're carrying uh, a second pair of shoes or something, um, stuff them with socks or small items. I use the space because they take up space to so use the space. Um, there are not a lot of, of these. Uh, one of the things I actually talking of socks is actually take one sock and put all your socks into that sock also takes up less room. Um, but there's, there's not a lot else that can help with, with packing unless you're a genius like Pavel here. Um, because uh, I still don't understand how he managed to do 80 days with uh, just that, but big respect. Um, and then we go to, um, yeah, train stations, I think this is. Hang on a second, let me just check my notes where I'm up to. Uh, do, yeah, there were a couple of other packing things. Is wear heavier items. You can take them off. You know, if, especially in the springtime. Uh, the autumn and spring are terrible times for traveling because you don't know whether to pack a light jumper or a heavier jumper. Take up a lot of space because is the weather going to be nice and sunny or is it going to be rainy and cold? Um, so if you need to take a, a thicker um, jumper or something, put it on you. Don't necessarily pack it. You can always take it off and just wrap it around your waist or, or over your shoulders. Um, yeah. Um, uh, this this one is about um, yeah um, moving. When we travel, the one of the first things that we do is uh, we get to the escalator and we stop moving, or we get to those travelators. You know these horizontal ones. I think they're called travelators. Maybe that's not the right word. Um, take the stairs or walk, unless you're really in a hurry, of course. Um, don't take these travelators. Don't take the escalator. Or if you do, walk on them. Um, most of us, we're not carrying such a heavy hand baggage. Um, and, and, you know, we can just pick it up and take the stairs. It, you know, if, if you're one of these Fitbit people and, and you need to get your 7,000 or 10,000 steps, 
um guarantee you'll do it uh on on a on a travel day um if if you're in the airport and you've got a couple of hours before your flight i mean again this is my uh, anxiety kicking in i have to know where the gate is so i always walk to the gate and then then i go and find uh, something to eat or drink um and and if i if i'm not in the mood for working i will even walk to the extremes of the airport i'll see what, what i can find in the airport where is the end of this uh, G G gates or, or F gates? Uh, where can I get to? Um, and I, I will just walk and walk and walk um, rather than just sitting uh, at the gate for two hours waiting for it to open. Um, also, uh, when traveling, wear comfy clothes, um, wear comfy shoes. Uh, it makes the walking walking much easier, something I have to keep reminding myself because I'm usually traveling, walking, uh, sorry, yeah, traveling with with my uh, fancy schmancy boots, and uh, after I've walked the length of G gates, my feet are killing me. Um, so wear comfy cho- comfy shoes. Um, yeah, this this what I'm going to see if I can get into this. Uh, I just found this the other day: the Encyclopedia of Sleeping Positions on a Plane. Um, it's not letting me get into it now. No. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find this, but this is absolutely hilarious. Um, I don't know, um, Vitaly, if, if you can maybe try and look it up um, and, and post the link. Uh, they have some very, the, it's not so much the sleeping positions, it's the names, that the, the titles they give them, the sleeping positions. Um, uh, it just, it just, yeah, it's funny. It's not very sensible. It doesn't resolve anything, but it was funny for me. Um, and sleeping is, is uh, it's important. Um, some people can just sit on a bus, sit on a train, sit on a plane, and they will just be gone like that. Um, I, I'm one of these people. I have to change position like five thousand times, and I'm still not comfortable. And 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 then the moment I do actually finally just drift off, then my uh, my elbow slips off the off the armrest, and I'm I'm like this, uh, and waking up again. Um, but um, Take plenty of rest before the day before traveling, um, and um, yeah, just just try and find what works for you. Um, there's 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 no easy solution to this. Um, some of the things it does say is is avoid hunching up your body. Uh, try and try and keep your body straight in as many ways as possible when you're traveling. Um, especially because many of us will be suffering from back problems uh, later in life. Um, Sleep masks, headphones, all these things can help. Um, Travel blankets, the planes don't offer them anymore. The airlines don't seem to offer them anymore. They used to uh, offer the blankets. I have to confess I have a rather large number of them here at home now. Um, But um, it's probably why they don't offer them anymore. (laughs) Sorry. Um, and uh, one of these neck pillows, you know, if, especially for long haul flights. Um, for 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 many of us traveling around Europe, the flights are generally one hour, two hours, two and a half. But uh, once you get into four four hours plus, you know, it can really be worth um, taking some extra extra support for yourself. Um, avoid heavy foods. Uh, avoid caffeine and alcohol the night before or the morning before um again especially for these long long haul flights and and try and move around on the plane um you know t- there are there are exercises you can do there it was a big thing a few years ago it doesn't mean it's gone away but uh it was a big scare some years ago about deep vein deep vein thrombosis um it's a, it's a very real thing um so it's important to you can just sit where you are on, on the plane for example again especially with long haul flights just twist, lift one leg up and twist your ankle around, um, or just lift lift the knee up towards towards your stomach and chest um, every now and again. Um, you don't necessarily have to get out of the seat and and, and be a pain to other passengers. Um, you can just do some small exercises sitting where you are. Um, again, not so relevant for the short haul, but uh, very relevant for if you're doing a lot of long haul flights. Um, just moving into other forms of transport, um, just not to have planes and airports dominate everything. Uh, trains, 
um, we're very Eurocentric based um, with, with with all of this work uh, because most of us are in Europe and we have an amazing rail network in Europe. Um, it's been decimated over the years. A lot of the night, uh, night trains got cut. They are starting to come back in the last couple of years. Um, and uh, train travel is improving again in Europe. Um, there are problems still. Um, a number of uh, countries uh, have a lot of difficulties with uh, regularity and, and uh, reliability. Germany. <clears throat> um, but um, uh, that can be a really good way of traveling. Um, one, one of the things uh, to think about is uh, or what a, most of us will do the moment we get on the train is, is we drag our luggage through the carriage, find a seat, um, and then we're stuck with the luggage. And then we have to fight through everybody to get to the luggage compartment uh, or the, the luggage area at the beginning of the carriage. Yeah? One of the things to do is, is put, immediately just dump your luggage in, in, in that area and then find a seat. Um, if you're thinking about... Um, uh, booking in advance where do you want to sit think about that also there are a number of tips that I, i've discovered with this if you sit in the middle uh yeah okay it's it's a little bit more difficult getting in or out uh the middle of the carriage this is um but it's going to be quieter if you're sitting by either of the exits you're going to be every train stop there's people passing by you so it can be very distracting think about what your needs are what you want uh, you want a forward-facing seat. Um, um, what's the other one? Uh, oh, the, with the with the table. My automatic reaction all the time is to go for the table. Actually, the table is often the worst seat you can have, simply because um, people with long legs tend to book those uh, seats. Yeah. So you're thinking you're there going to get all the leg room you need because you booked the table seat. Actually, the long-legged person in front of you is taking up all the leg room. Um, so uh, it's not always the most sensible choice. Also, people tend to use that space under the table for their luggage. Again, you end up with no leg space. If you want leg room, take uh, take a regular seat, not a, not a table seat. Um, and even with the regular seats, you still get a small table if you want to put a computer on there. It's not as convenient as having the, the, the full table, but it, it's worth the thought. Um, most trains now around Europe are traveling with power sockets and with uh, internet. Still not hugely reliable everywhere, um, uh, but um, the, the options are there. Um, so th this can be, um, be be worth taking into account, but maybe take a, a, a power bank with you um, just in case. Um, and if you have access to your own internet, it's also it can also be better. Um, also think, do you want to be near the buffet car? Again, if you're near the buffet car, if the train has one, uh, there's going to be a lot of traffic coming past you. So uh, it might be convenient to get a coffee, but if you want to concentrate and work, it might not be the place you want to be. Um, you can also get compartments. They can be quieter. Um, yeah. Avoid short layovers. It can sound really, uh, really uh, like a really good plan to have um, just 15, 20 minutes between trains. Um, but you can really screw yourself with this because uh, trains can be notoriously late. Um, and most of the time, uh, your the train you're getting off and the train you need to get onto are going to be six platforms apart. And you either have to climb a set of stairs to go over a bridge or down a set of stairs to go into a subway to run to climb up the stairs or down the stairs again to get to that platform and to find out where that platform is. Huge panic. Um, you're already a few minutes late. You've got to run like crazy. You get to the train, sweating, tired. Go for a long layover. Uh, try and get at least an hour, uh, 45 minutes between the trains. Then you have time to work out calmly where your train is um and get there calmly without uh, and even get time for a cup of coffee or something like that if, if, if you want um if you're traveling without a reservation avoid the hours of eight till ten in the morning and uh, five till six or seven in the evenings those trains are going to be absolutely packed and you are not going to get anywhere to sit uh also um keep in mind sometimes we don't have a choice when we travel because uh, often we're as trainers we're, we're working to other people's schedules but avoid um, nights and weekends and holidays. 
This is when the, uh, the companies do the repair work on the lines, which can then lead to a lot of difficulties. Avoid taking the last train at night, um, because if there's a cancellation, that's the last train. Well, that was the last train. Um, you've now got to wait till five, six o'clock in the morning for the next one. Um, so uh, always, always avoid that. Um, again, with tickets, um, I think you also have the, the, the same thing with trains. The ticket prices can go higher and higher. So it's worth checking out. Um, I can't remember what that was about. Ah, yeah, here we go. Um, sometimes the first class can be cheaper than the second class um, because you're booking late. So the, the price of the second class has gone up. So that, that's worth checking out as well. And again, negotiating with your employer if it's okay to uh, to take the, the first class ticket, which generally we're not supposed to. Um, avoid busy times a year. Uh, the best ticket deal may not be the best deal. It may be the best deal price-wise, but you may not have any flexibility. You may have only that train to take. And if you miss that train, you have to buy another ticket. Um, so, um, you know, try to look for a flexible ticket rather than the, the best price. Um, and keep in mind that different rules apply to, um, to train travel in every European country. Um, whether you have to scan the ticket before you get onto the platform, on the platform, on the train, not at all. Every country has something different uh, about how they work. And then finally, uh, the, the good old buses and um, the, uh, the Flix bus, which arrived many years ago now, I think they've been around for quite a long time now, um, really revolutionized uh, cost of travel. Um, I haven't used them that often, so I, I don't really have a lot to say about them. Um, but it is another form of transport, which is not a plane. If, if there are options to use buses, um, then, uh, you know, three, four hours in a bus is not the end of the world. Um, I have done 16 to 20 hours in buses and I really don't don't recommend it and I would never do it anymore <laughs> personally. Um, but um, the downside for me with buses versus trains is that in a train I can get up and move around. Um, in a bus, it's much more restrictive. Um, I think there's also more space for, for your legs and your body in a train as opposed to a bus. Um, yeah, there's this personally, as, and this is just personal, I, I would always uh, prioritize a train over a bus, um, but uh, they are an option. Um, you know, take a small bag on board with you. Uh, this also applies to trains actually. Um, you don't need all your, all your luggage with you all the time. A small, small little rucksack, which can have a bottle of water, some snacks, um, extra clothing item like a scarf because sometimes um, buses, well, I'm living in the Balkans, so um, maybe this is not the same everywhere, but the buses either, they they have super hardcore heating systems or or nothing at all. Um, so uh, you freeze or, or you, you boil. But um, yeah, you can take an extra item of clothing like a scarf because you can get cold. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, yeah, the end. <laughs>